We're going to be adjusting the valve lash on my 1986 Nissan 720 pickup here. It's got the 2.4 liter Z24 motor in it. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a set of feeler gauges like these ones here. Get them at your local auto parts store. If your local auto parts store doesn't have them, then you might want to find a good local auto parts store. You'll want a 12 mil combination wrench. Flat head screwdriver, doesn't really matter on that one, just not a monster. And you're also going to want a Phillips head screwdriver to take off the valve cover. I prefer to use a number three Phillips on the valve cover screws just because they're generally stuck in old and tight like everything else on these trucks. Now, for the feeler gauge size, that is in inches. I, I have no idea why everything else is in metric. You can use a metric one to uh, but I just have the standard or stupid size ones, whatever you want to call it. For the size on those, you're going to want a 0 .012 for the feeler gauge. And you're, you're going to just take the valve cover off and, and go for it. Before you begin though, you're going to want to make sure the motor is good and warm. Drive around a little bit, get the temp gauge up. The uh, factory service manual says you're going to want to go to half on the gauge but my trucks never get there so just just get it up to where it holds drive a couple miles don't have to get it super stinking hot and burn your hands but I've found by the time you get the valve cover off it's gonna have cooled down enough where you're not gonna burn your fingers but the adjustment has to be done wet you can't do it on a cold motor or you'll get uh, inaccurate results so you also might consider a pair of gloves I don't know whatever it takes to keep her happy I guess Keep your fingers nice and clean. Don't mess up the sink at home. So we're gonna pull the valve cover here. I already took the screws out because I can cheat like that. Sometimes I pull this little rubber half moon here that's at the front of the in front of the cam gear here, just so I don't drop it down. You don't want to have to buy a new one. If you do drop it down though, you can take the whole front of the motor off if you want to, uh, or just, just not worry about it. Just make sure it drops all the way down to the oil pan. I usually will stick a rag or a wad of towel that's just in front of the cam gear so I don't drop anything down there. You know, you, you put a few feeler gauge down there, something you're going to regret it. So we're going to want to have the first cylinder at top dead center. And you're gonna to want to make sure that the when you look at the cam you can see the lobes are not opening the exhaust or the intake valves they're both closed if you happen to have a spark plug out which I would recommend doing because it makes it easier to turn over no compression you can stick it down the spark plug hole and you can feel the cylinders at the top of its rotation there just a little assurance so you know you're good now we're going to take the this nut here loose and then we're going to adjust the screw on top. And we're gonna put the uh, feeler gauge in here. Not under the cam like you would on an L-series motor. Just, just right here. And as you can see, there's no way, no way that's fitting in there. So we're gonna have to loosen that up. Now, for the order here, this is, you, you wanna get this right. It's not quite back to front, just, Almost, almost just enough to confuse you. So you're gonna put the first cylinder at top dead center. You're gonna do one, two, skip three, and then do four. Okay, so you're gonna do one, two, skip three, go to four, skip five, and go to six. Now, after you've done that, you're gonna set the fourth cylinder, the back one here, to top dead center, and then you're going to do three, five, seven, and eight.
So we're going to start at the beginning here. So we're going to do one. And it's all already a little bit loose. So we're going to just turn the screw loose here a little bit. And it should start to come up so we can uh, slip the gauge under there. Okay, I have to slip the gauge under there. Yeah, we should be able to just slip it under the screw here. Ah, there we go. Yep, it just slips under the screw here. Then we'll bring that down because I obviously took it out too far. So with this, you're going to want a little bit of tension, not not crazy tension, you know. You're gonna to wanna to be able to just slide that gauge in and out. So right now I've got it, I can't move. So, so I like to tighten it down until the gauge doesn't come out. Then I pull it back just a little bit. So it kind of slides freely, but not not too crazy tight, because if it's too tight, obviously that's bad. So then we're going to take, we're gonna put the screwdriver on top of the screw. Then we're gonna take the combination wrench and carefully hold the screw while we tighten the, the nut. Then we're going to do the same on the uh, number two. Just take the combination wrench, loosen it up, grab the feeler gauge. Again, the size on that feeler gauge is a 0 0.012 of an inch. Then we're going to find where we can slip that in. This one is actually too loose, unlike the opposite side. So we're going to tighten it down until the feeler gauge doesn't move. Then we're gonna back off just a little bit, get it to slide freely, but not too freely. See, I messed it up. There we go. Now, you're going to put the combination wrench on, put the screwdriver in, and tighten the nut. Then, make sure you didn't mess it up. Put, yep, feeler gauge slides, okay. Double check the other side. Yep, that one's okay. Now, Then we're gonna do the next ones, and I'll bring it back to wrap it up. Okay, so once you, when you're putting it to top dead center, you're gonna wanna just turn the motor. So everybody does that a kind of a different way, but you can you can put a 27 mil socket on the pulley on the front, but you won't be able to do that because of the fan and the cross member are getting in the way. But you can bump the starter, or you can turn the fan belt just using the alternator. If you don't have a clutched fan, you can just grab the fan and turn the fan. On the uh, nuts on top of the rocker arm, you can see some on this motor I have sitting here. These nuts, the uh, torque spec on those is between 12 and 16 foot pounds. So if you have a small torque wrench, that'd be perfect just to get from inch pounds to foot pounds, just gonna multiply by 12. And on this motor I have out of the vehicle right now, you can see this, this right here is where the feeler gauge slips in. This one is, is not at top dead center on one, so it fits with, with too much clearance. But yeah, that, that should finish it up. Just start it up. Don't forget to put the plugs back in, brake booster line, and when you're turning the motor, of course, uh, make sure to leave it in neutral or it'll try and walk over you. So thanks, hope it works for you.